This conference will now be recorded. Okay, today we are studying about uh, uh, industrial ventilation. Uh, this is chapter seven of uh, David Jeffs uh, with the name of ventilation. Uh, I have named it as industrial ventilation because uh, we are not studying about uh, domestic ventilation. Uh, we are all uh, studying about industrial ventilation. Uh, this is a very important chapter. <laughs> Uh, uh, according to uh, David Jets, there may be four, five, six questions from this chapter in the CSP exam. Uh, and this chapter also uh, uh, accompanies a lot of technical uh, concepts, uh, technical formulas, and there may be uh, numerical based questions, uh, calculation based questions in the CSP exam from this chapter. Uh, okay. Uh, first of all, uh, what is ventilation and what is the purpose of ventilation? Uh, the basic uh, purpose of venti uh, ventilation is uh, number one, maintain adequate oxygen supply. In some cases, we do ventilation to maintain oxygen supply, and in some cases, to reduce the concentration of hazardous chemical. And in some cases to remove the orders, and in some cases to control the temperature and humidity, and in some cases uh, contaminated at, uh, from the source. We capture the contaminant from the uh, point of generation and remove it from subsiding in the workplace. Uh, these may be the purposes, these may be the basic. Uh, uh, functions of the ventilation uh, in, in any room, in any workplace. Uh, sometimes there may be a single objective and some may be, uh, there may be two or more purposes uh, for the ventilation. Uh, if we uh, talk about some general notes, uh, first one, air movement result from different impressions. Uh, this is the basic principle of our ventilation. Uh, we can move air when there is a defensive pressure. We can't move air if there is no defensive pressure. Uh, so therefore, whenever we are making uh, air flow, when we are creating a velocity of the air, when we are uh, going to ventilate, then we have to create pressure defense. Point number two, defensive pressure can be attained by heating by mechanical uh, means. No, how we can create uh, defensive pressure? By mechanical means. Mechanical means we can use defensive pressure by fan, by use of blower, by use of uh, compressors. Uh, when we will create uh, uh, pressure defense, then we will uh, achieve a uh, velocity of the air. Uh, we can also uh, move air with the velocity by heating or cooling. When there is temperature gradient, we can move the air. Uh, however, the most effective uh, means of moving the air are mechanical means, and mostly we use mechanical means like fan, like blower, and air in the industry. And the principle number three, a temperature gradient contribute to the ventilation. Uh, almost we have discussed this point. If there is uh, temperature gradient by cooling, by heating, we can move uh, air. Uh, however, uh, the efficiency of air movement, the velocity of air movement is not too much as we can achieve with the mechanical mean like fans and blower. Okay, next slide, types of ventilation. Ventilation is basically divided into three categories. Uh, number one, general ventilation. Uh, number two, dilution ventilation. And number three, uh, local exhaust ventilation. Uh, if we talk about general ventilation, uh, this is mostly uh, is for thermal comfort. Uh, uh, if we want to maintain a temperature, if we want to maintain humidity, remove order, uh, air conditioning, heating, uh, then we use general ventilation. Uh, this may be used at domestic level and this may be used at industrial level. And second one type is uh, dilution ventilation. Uh, in industry, we use most of the time uh, dilution ventilation. Um, meaning of the dilute is 
to decrease the concentration of contaminant contaminant may be any uh, anything like dust uh, like particle like uh, uh, gas vapor uh, volatile organic compound component any contaminant that is being generated inside the room uh, and we want to decrease its, con its concentration that is called dilute ventilation uh, for example uh, we are working in a room, there is a concentration of contamination is 200 ppm and there is a legal uh, limit of 100 ppm. Uh, we have to reduce it from 200 ppm to 100 ppm. Then we, we have to move, we have to circulate a steady state uh, air in that room. Uh, that will remove the contaminant from the room and it will decrease the concentration of the contaminant in the home. Uh, dilution ventilation is not so much effective. Dilution ventilation is mostly used uh, uh, you know, with the substance which, is more, which are mostly moderately toxic. It is not used for uh, very toxic chemicals. Uh, number two, it is used via large number of sources. Uh, because there are large number of contaminants, uh, most of uh, leakage are uh, happening from different sources, uh, then we can use the uh, dilution ventilation. And uh, if there are intermittent exposure, then we can also use uh, the dilution ventilation. Next one is uh, uh, local. Uh, engineer uh, Abdul Wafar, I have a question. Uh, okay, uh, yes, please give me one minute. We, um, um, let me to complete types of uh, ventilation. At the end of every subtopic, uh, we will have a question answer session. Okay. Okay. Third okay. Type, right. Third type is local exhaust uh, ventilation. Uh, local exhaust ventilation actually capture the contaminant. So capture the uh, dust or yeah, gas from the point of generation. It prevents to spread the contamination in the room. It prevents to spread the contaminants in the breathing zone. Uh, for example, uh, if there is a situation that uh, there is a chemical which is very much toxic, uh, we can't use uh, dilution ventilation. Uh, we have to come up with the uh, local exhaust ventilation. If there is a single source, we can use uh, local exhaust ventilation. And uh, if the limit of the contaminant is very low, that cannot be achieved by the uh, local, uh, that cannot be achieved by the dilution ventilation, then we have to uh, use the local exhaust ventilation. In short, there are three types of ventilation. Uh, one is general ventilation. Uh, which is used mostly for thermal comfort. And the uh, second one is dilution ventilation, which is used to dilute, which is used to decrease the concentration of the contaminant. And the third one type is local exhaust ventilation, uh, that is uh, used to capture the contaminant from the point of source. And then we uh, discharge the contaminant through ducts. Okay, anyone, uh, if there is a question, please, uh, you can uh, on air your question. So far, if there is question, please on air your question. Uh, Mr. Gafar, this uh, HVAC system, uh, so it will fall under the general ventilation. Uh, yeah, according to David Jade, it is uh, for uh, if it is designed for thermal comfort, uh, comfort, and then it is general ventilation. Uh, okay. Jawad, you are talking about the HVAC. Uh, HVAC. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, it will uh, fall under the category of general ventilation because we are uh, not uh, diluting the. Uh, Contaminant. It is not designed for diluting dilution of the uh, contamination or dust or uh, other gases. Uh, okay. And uh, exhaust. 
sorry uh, okay and this exhaust fan so it will fall in which category uh, okay uh, because it uh, removes the air from the uh, room it can decrease the concentration uh, what the uh, uh, simple exhaust fan which is used at domestic level and which is not designed for it is a type of uh, dilution ventilation but it should have a proper design uh, for uh, industrial ventilation we uh, should know the what is the generation rate of the contamination what the circulation rate, uh, rate of the air what is the mixing rate of air and which is the existing concentration and which is our target concentration then it is designed by the experts then it will serve the purpose it is a type of dilution ventilation but it should have a proper design okay and the uh, for, uh, is it the example of uh, local exhaust ventilation that if there are uh, gen uh, some kind of activity that uh, and fumes are generated so uh, we put uh, some exhaust to uh, exhaust the dead fumes to outside the room or oh, sorry outside the uh, uh, environment so it, is there is it the example of local exhaust ventilation no no i don't think so this uh, fulfill the criteria of uh, local exhaust ventilation for led ventilation there must be some sort of duct uh, some sort of port that can capture okay. uh, the contamination per point of generation and there we transport that contaminant air to duct system uh, from these duct uh, then when there is a fan in the um, okay, uh, okay. system and then it discharges to the stack outside the air if there is such type of the system it will be called as a local exhaust ventilation a simple okay. exhaust fan okay. uh, will not uh, uh, fulfill the criteria okay okay thank you, uh, thank uh, thank you. can we so move yeah. forward yeah yes. just one thing just uh, i want to make i mean say if this is for the local exhaust ventilation like if we are yes you are also showing some picture i think if the duct is there and if the exhaust fan is uh, uh, means uh, outside okay or it's uh, you know almost outside then you know we can uh, call this exhaust fan as a part of the local ventilation if i am right or wrong i don't know mr zafar uh, will just tell me uh, uh okay if we have uh, all the ring that looks like in the picture uh mr jawad are you talking about uh, this picture if yeah we, yeah uh, now you have just put yeah you have just put this picture means uh, this uh, exhaust fan uh, i think they have put here uh, near the outlet like where the arrow is going for the two stack and behind this there is a fan so it is actually working as a exhaust fan i think here but this is through a duct system and here the hood is actually a local uh, ventilation point i think for uh, section okay, okay. Uh, please just give me one minute uh, let me to explain the basic component of uh, local exhaust ventilation then uh, we will discuss your question okay ji okay uh, this is a simple uh, diagram of local exhaust uh, ventilation uh, for example, here uh, there is a operation going on. There is an activity which is producing a dust or gas, and we have a hood uh, at this point, uh, which is capturing uh, the contaminant from this point of generation, and then it transports uh, from uh, branch ducts. Then it comes into main ducts, and here we have a air filter or air cleaner which clean the air and uh, Dust particles are accumulated here in the air bag uh, below, and here is a fan uh, which uh, uh, which is uh, providing energy to air for the moment. And if we move forward, then there is a stack, there is a discharge which move the air outside the room. If we have such kind of information, uh, mostly uh, fan location is after the uh, air filter. Uh, I don't know. This can be decided by the designer. Uh, where a uh, fan should be located? It can be located here, or we can it move forward towards the stack. If we have such kind of arrangement, or we have a sufficient capture velocity uh, at the hood, which has sufficient power, which has sufficient velocity 
that it can capture the contaminant from the source of generation. It does not, it, it didn't allow the contaminant to spread in the room, then it can be called uh, uh, arrangement for the local exhaust regulation. G, Mr. Jawar. Uh, yes, Mr. Gafar. Uh, yes, now. Uh, it uh you know yes uh, according to this diagram it looks like this actually this is the fan that is creating this negative pressure uh, and yeah. uh, you were telling that uh, this air cleaner or this collector is put uh, like in the middle so it means that uh, this air uh, so i you have just to correct me because i'm just making my own mind like the okay. fan is there the fan should be having such a suction pressure that uh, the air collector which is also producing some resistance 100 percent it will produce some resistance so it pressure should also break this resistance to suck the air and then it's this ex it is actually i think like exhaust fan and it will throw out the air outside and any contamination yes that will be collected on this filter uh, okay. yeah so the press suction pressure is actually coming i think from this fan Okay, yes, of course. So, so pressure is coming from this fan. Uh, actually, there are losses. Uh, first of all, a uh, hood should have a sufficient large size that should cover all the contaminants which are being produced. And uh, number two, there are losses at the entry of the duct, uh, hood. There are losses inside the duct. There are losses in the filter. And fan should have uh, such power that it could overcome all the losses. And then it should be able to uh, generate, it should be able to produce sufficient velocity uh, that is called capture velocity that this, this velocity should uh, so much high that it can capture all the contaminants from the source of generation. Okay, next uh, we will talk some basic uh, terminologies about the ventilation. Uh, that is uh, total pressure, static pressure, and velocity pressure. Uh, whenever there is a ventilation, uh, starting from the, the bottom, uh, in the ventilation system, the total pressure is the sum of uh, velocity pressure and static, uh, static pressure. Total pressure inside the ventilation at uh, any point is the sum of static pressure and velocity pressure. Now, what is the uh, static pressure? Static pressure actually, uh, this is uh, it's calculated by the force per unit area. Static pressure is equal to P over A, force per unit area. Uh, this is uh, due to static pressure. This may be positive or this may be negative. Uh, for example, if there is a uh, pressure vessel, uh, we have a compressed air inside, there will be positive static pressure. And similarly, we can have a vessel uh, where have we have a vacuum, then there will be a negative static pressure. Or if we talk about the velocity pressure, velocity pressure is due to movement of the air. Uh, this is uh, measured uh, by the due to, uh, this is due to velocity. If we measure the Velocity pressure. Uh, here we can see the formula. This is velocity pressure. This is equal to 4005 velocity pressure uh, or standard root. If we know velocity pressure from this formula, uh, we can measure the velocity. Or uh, one thing is important uh, how we measure static pressure and how we measure velocity pressure. Mostly we mirror it from the pitted tube. Uh, to mirror the velocity pressure, we put the pitted tube inside the uh, pipe, inside the duct, uh, parallel to movement of the hair. Or if we want to mirror static pressure, then we insert uh, the pitted tube perpendicular to the tube, perpendicular to the pipe. Or when we uh, measure both static pressure and velocity pressure, then we calculate the total pressure. Here, there is a, a one important formula that is Q is equal to V over A. Uh, this formula explains that 
inside any pipe, inside any duct, the volumetric flow rate of the air is equal to velocity multiplied by area of the duct. It means if we want to know the volumetric flow rate inside the duct, inside the pipe, we have to uh, calculate velocity and its area. Then multiply by velocity and area, we can know the volumetric flow rate. Here, you, units are very important. Here, units are very important. Mostly uh, in a metal system, in David Gates, uh, for velocity, units are used for foot per minute. And for area, units are used foot. Area will be in square feet. And similarly, uh, velocity pressure, static pressure that are made in, uh, we can measure in uh, um, inches of Hg and inches of mercury. We can also measure in, uh, in uh, inches of water. Uh, here, uh, this formula uses the unit of inches of water gauge. Uh, when there is any numerical, there is any question inside the, uh, the CSP paper, uh, we should take care about the units. If we uh, calculate with the uh, other units which are not incorporated inside formula, then we will got get a wrong answer and our answer will be marked. Uh, our result, our output will be a false. Okay. Uh, 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 Mr. Uh, Mr. Abdul Ghaffar, uh, can you uh, um, go back, please, to the previous okay. slide? Okay. Here is the VP. VP is the velocity pressure of it, it is a constant? Uh, no, no. Uh, both can vary. Both, both can vary. Uh, for example, there is a uh, uh, which has a constant uh, cross sectional area. Uh, uh, and it has a steady state, then it can be constant. If there is a duct uh, at one point at that section, it has a cross sectional area which is small, and then cross sectional area increase, then cross sectional area is, then it can change. Okay. okay. If, this, if, for example, this is a pipe and it is flowing uh, with the, uh, there is a dia of four, four inch dia and air flowing in. And suddenly air expand and there is six inch dia, then velocity of air will decrease and pressure of the air will increase. It is it very much dependent on the cross sectional area of the pipe, cross sectional area of the uh, uh, tube. Okay, but, and, but how, how can but okay yes you are right but how can it impact the designing of uh, exhaust? Uh, by uh, ventilation. Why? Uh, how? Uh, okay. Uh, first one. Uh, when we design a ventilation system, uh, uh, we must have uh, a particular value of uh, capture velocity, phase velocity, and the whole, and transport velocity inside the duct. Okay. okay. Uh, and furthermore, when there is a flow inside any duct, inside any pipe. Uh, as the flow continues, there are two types of losses. One is dynamic losses and one is friction losses. Uh, in other words, we can see when air uh, move across a duct, then uh, energy of the uh, air is going to decrease due to friction losses. And okay. at each, every section, uh, the static pressure and velocity pressure can change due to uh, friction losses. And uh, mm. we have a particular value of the velocity till the end of the uh, duct. Uh, that is why designer calculates uh, static pressure, velocity pressure, uh, and uh, values of the velocity at the different section uh, of the ducts of the uh, system. Okay. Okay, right. Okay. Thank you. Um, furthermore, when we um, Further discuss some technicalities uh, and other technical formula we, which we are going to discuss in coming slides. Uh, it, uh, you will able to know that uh, for every calculation, we must know these basic things. 
static pressure, elastic pressure, uh, flow rate, cross-sectional area. These are all the basic terminologies which are used for other formulas for the design of ventilation system. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, for example, uh, for example, uh, here is a duct. Uh, here is a pipe or uh, duct, uh, and we have a fan here. Uh, we uh, here, this is the uh, downstream side uh, where there is a negative pressure, and uh, here is a positive side pressure, which is, which is upstream side. Uh, how we can measure the static pressure, elastic pressure, and uh, total pressure? Okay, uh, here with this. If we put the pitot tube like this, and we attach it with the manometer, that is pressure rate, then we will get good static pressure. If we put the pitot tube like this, uh, air is coming from this side, and we attach with the manometer, then we get total pressure. And if we attach like this, this one repeater tube is here, and other is attached from this side. From this side, there will be elastic pressure, and from this side, there will be static pressure, and resultantly, we will get uh, the elastic pressure. So, this is the position of our tube, uh, which is called very much. What pressure we want to measure? We want to measure static pressure, we want to measure elastic pressure, we want to measure static uh, total pressure. This is depend on the position of the tube. And here, after the fine, we, we come towards the upstream side, their pressure are positive. Uh, we will put the tube and manometer uh, like the previous configuration, like the previous arrangement. But we will achieve the static pressure and the total pressure as a positive. Uh, mostly, uh, sometimes or not mostly. Uh, here I heard one time uh, from our one of participants uh, inside the duct. Uh, uh, where is negative pressure? Where is positive pressure? So from uh, this configuration, we can assess. Uh, we can judge that before the point from this side. This is negative uh, pressure side, and from this side. Uh, because energy has been added inside the figure, inside the air, mostly this uh, on this side, pressures are positive. Uh, okay, G, any questions so far? Okay, Mr. Rafar, in uh, in the downstream, if if we calculate the static pressure uh, of the, the picture is like the here, the static pressure, and if uh, addition, with the addition of velocity pressure, then this value is equal to the total pressure that is by the another pitot tube at the end. Uh, okay, uh, here we can uh, total pressure can be calculated in two ways. Uh, first one, uh, we measure the static pressure. No, but but, but uh, okay, I'm sorry, extreme, extremely sorry to interrupt you because you already mentioned in the formula that the total pressure is equal to static pressure plus velocity pressure. If we calculate the static pressure plus velocity pressure, then and other sources and collect them, uh, combine them, then it will be equal to the total pressure of uh, my, uh, by measuring other other means. So my question yeah, is yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. We can measure total pressure in two ways. For example, we measure static pressure here, and then we okay. measure velocity pressure, and then we can apply formula. We will get total pressure. And there okay. is also a manometer and position of the tube like this. Here we okay. will get also total pressure. So both pressure ideally should be equal. But okay. due to some losses, there may be minor difference, mm. but theoretically, these pressure should be equal. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So nice. Sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Next uh, topic is contaminant uh, generation. Okay, uh, let me know one thing. Actually, uh, on the right side, on the slide, there is one formula, and uh, also go to meeting showing names of the participants. 
is formula uh, clear to everyone yes yes, yes. We can read the whole formula that is law of nature g minus one and g this is this. Yes, clear. At, yes. Actually, I cannot read you because there is a um, bar uh, on this side. I can only read law of natural g minus over g minus. Uh, okay. Mr. Gulafar, you do one thing. Uh, at the top, there, there, there is a bar. There will be the two arrows. If you click on those two lines, then uh, you know the sidebar will be uh, come on the top and you can have a clear picture uh, no it's not uh, okay. okay no problem uh, i will go with it uh, okay next contaminant generation actually when we are going to design ventilation system first of all we should know uh, which is the contaminant either it is dust either it is gas it is vapor and uh, what is density? What is specific gravity? It is lighter than air, or uh, it is uh, heavier than air. This is very important in the designing of the uh, ventilation system. When we know about uh, uh, the contaminant, then we should know about at which rate contaminant is being generated. At which rate contaminant is uh, being generated. Then we uh, uh, know other thing that contaminant generation is proper mixing. What will be mixing? There will be fully mixing inside the room, or uh, uh, there will be some uh, decrease in efficiency of mixing. And what we want target final concentration. We should know initial concentration. Contaminant generation rate, mixing rate, final concentration. Then we can apply this formula. This formula is equal to law of natural uh, G minus QC2 over G minus QC1 and QT2 T1 or V. But the most important thing is what these parameters stand for. G is generation rate of contaminant. G is rate of generation of contaminant. And uh, Q is uh, volumetric flow rate. Q is volumetric flow rate of air, the ventilation rate. And Q dash is equal to Q over K. K is a design factor. Design factor then how good is distribution? How good is, is mixing inside the room? Uh, we can uh, attach value from one to 10 for mixing. If we have a very good mixing, we can 10. If we have a poor mixer, we can assign a value of one. And uh, C is concentration inside the room. And of course, C1 is the concentration of the contaminant at time one. And C2 is the concentration at time two. And T2 minus T1, these are the two times. And, uh, and their distance is the time interval. Uh, Mostly in the exam, formulas are given. Actually, the important thing we should know for which B stands, for which K, C, V, and Q stands for. We must have that clear concept that for which these parameters stand for and what is unit. For example, uh, unit of G is cubic foot per minute. And a unit of concentration is ppm, that is part per minute. And uh, similarly, unit of velocity is uh, foot per minute. Uh, we must be able to know that for which these parameters stand for and which is the unit. And uh, mostly are uh, at some time on and off uh, in. Uh, PFT examination, examiner may change the unit of this parameter and we should take uh, consideration of the unit. If we don't take consideration of the units of these parameters, we will uh, got, we will get uh, raw answer. Okay. Uh, if we extend this formula, 
there is a room and uh, there is some operation or activity that is going inside that room and contaminant is uh, uh, being generated with the constant uh, generation state, then when we can apply the previous formula. Okay, here is one another scenario. For example, our operation ceased and the generation of contamination also come to an end. And then uh, what formula, uh, what this formula will take the, uh, here, if generation of contamination ceased off, then G will be zero. Both G in this formula will come zero or Q or upper side of the will cut and our formula will become like this. That, that is log natural of C2 over C1 that is equal to minus Q over B, C2 minus C1. Here we put minus value because uh, uh, when we deal with the natural log, we will um, got answer in negative. To make it positive, we have put the negative value. Here we should remember if there is a log natural and in there may be chance that in the examination, the formula is without the negative sign. If there is a numerical about this formula, where there is a log natural, we must able to remember that we have to put minus value from our side. Uh, this is similar formula we have used previous, only the contamination generation rate has become zero, then Q has zero, and we have achieved this formula. Okay, uh, this was uh, our two slides about like this scenario that an activity is going on in one uh, in the room and uh, our uh, contaminant is being generated inside the room or uh, we have uh, placed a ventilation system there which is making the air flow uh, with the constant uh, rate and then we can put uh, any other parameter, we can uh, calculate the other parameter. For example, we can calculate uh, the flow rate uh, of the air here. We can calculate uh, the concentration of the contamination here, final concentration. If we know other parameters, then we can also calculate the uh, time uh, from this formula. Uh, like other features, if we know other parameters, we can uh, no, we can calculate the unknown parameters. Okay, so far, uh, for this scenario, any point, any question for discussion? Uh, one thing, Abdul uh, Farsad, one thing is uh, if similarly, Similarly, if uh, like we are calculating the rate for uh, airflow rate, similarly, we are calculating the rate for the solvent as well. So uh, did it, me it, it uh, means that uh, the air has some solvent inside when, when we uh, locally exhaust or when we design a lo local uh, ventilation or a pure solvent can also be a pure solvent means a mixture of solvent in the air is also be exhausted through this local uh, LEV. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Man, uh, you have raised a very good question uh, that will help to understand uh, one very important aspect of this formula. Okay. okay. In uh, here in this chapter. Uh, a formula is not applicable on every scenario. This formula is only a particular scenario. And the scenario is that if there is uh, a contamination, is the contaminant is being generated inside the room with some rate, uh, we have to remove that contaminant. We have placed a uh, 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 system, uh, ventilation system, for example, dilution ventilation, which has, a, which has a particular velocity, which has a particular flow rate. Here, flow rate is the volumetric flow rate is the flow rate of pressure. Okay. Okay. And the 
contamination rate the ignition rate is the ignition rate of the contaminant mm, okay to apply this formula we must know all the other parameters to to calculate one unknown parameter we mm, can't okay. apply this formula only mm. on this scenario we can't apply this formula on an, any other scenario mm, okay 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 uh, here uh, if this scenario take the situation like this our generation rate our contaminant is no no more being generated our operation has stopped our contamination which is being generated has been stopped then in this formula g contamination rate will become zero zero and our formula will take the form like this okay and we use this formula mostly for example uh, there is a 200 ppm concentration inside the room and we have stopped the operation which is generating the contaminant okay. certainly it will take some time for example there will it will take one hour to uh, lower down the concentration to acceptable limit it will take some time to decrease the concentration inside the room uh, for example uh, if we know, know C2, C1, Q, and V, and we want to know that we have uh, stopped the operation at 11 o'clock, then we can calculate here that from 200 ppm to get 100 ppm concentration, uh, how much time it will need. For example, it will take 40 minutes. It will take 60 minutes to decrease the concentration from 200 ppm to 100 ppm. And we can calculate uh, this time from the formula. Okay, next we are going towards uh, next scenario. Let the scenario we have discussed in the previous slide behind. Now we have an another scenario and we have a, another formula. Okay, this is about rate of generation from uh, liquid solvent. This is the case. Uh, there is a room where there is a liquid solvent inside the room and that uh, solvent is uh, evaporating. This is, that is evaporating naturally, that is evaporating due, due to uh, circulation of the air, whatever the reason. There is a solvent which can evaporate and it is evaporating inside the room uh, then uh, here is, this is the formula uh, we can apply here. This formula is equal to Q is equal to, okay, let me, uh, uh, Q is equal to uh, 403 into 10 raised to power 6, and then SG, that is specific gravity of the liquid, ER, that is evaporation rate of the liquid, and then K, K is mixing rate, and MWO, that is molecular weight of the solvent, and C, and uh, C is the desired concentration of the contaminant, that is TPL, or mostly desired concentration is our TLV, yeah, TLV. Mostly, that is the legal limit. For example, if there is a legal limit of 100 ppm, then this C we wish to achieve, we decrease to, uh, we wish to decrease the concentration of that solvent inside the room up to C. And that more in most of cases, this is TLV threshold limit value. Okay, once again, uh, let me elaborate. If there is a room and there is a liquid solvent inside that room and it has uh, it is evaporating inside the room then we can use this formula q is actual ventilation rate that is flow rate of the pressure and unit are pfm cubic foot per per minute as specific gravity of that liquid 
ER evaporation rate of that liquid that the pin per minute. Okay, this is uh, notable. Evaporation rate is in pin per minute. If in question evaporation rate is not in pin per minute, we have to calculate, we have to convert the evaporation rate into pin per minute. And K is design factor and uh, distribution factor. How good is mixing of air inside the room? And uh, we can choose it from the table. If there is very ideal uh, mixing rate, then we can choose 9, 10. If there is low mixing rate, we can come to a 2, 3, 1. And this formula is uh, mostly uh, used uh, to uh, calculate uh, different parameters. Uh, for example, uh, if we know the evaporation rate and other parameters uh, of the liquid inside the room, then to get the concentration below the legal limit, what flow rate we need? What air flow rate we should need? We can calculate from Q here. But we must know its specific gravity, its evaporation, its molecular weight, and its final concentration we need. And furthermore, from this formula, we can also calculate if we have a particular flow rate in that room, and then we can calculate the final concentration. But this formula is only applicable to the scenario, and scenario is that there is a room, and in that room, there is a, a solvent, there is a evaporating liquid. Yeah, there is a process uh, where a liquid is going to be evaporated uh, due to chemical process, and we know the evaporation rate. Then we can apply this formula only. We cannot apply this formula on other scenario. Okay, Ji, uh, about this topic, if there is any question, there is any point for discussion. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Gafar, this uh, slide, like the rate of generation of liquid solvent, it is just telling us uh, first to identify what is the rate of the generation of the liquid contaminant in the form of the vapors. Once we understand the rate of generation of this liquid contaminant, then uh, in the next slide maybe we will go for the calculation of the rate of the ventilation that will be required to overcome this rate of generation of the liquid solvent so so uh, means this is not for the ventilation this is just for the rate of the generation of the liquid solvent for which no. in maybe this, this, yeah this this is for the ventilation but for what ventilation for liquid solvent which evaporate. For example, uh, for example uh, uh, there is a room and a process is uh, going there and it, this process is creating a dust. This process is creating, this generating uh, gas. Then we can apply the previous formula. If we have a liquid which evaporate, liquid can evaporate uh, uh, only if there is a liquid, it can evaporate. It, its evaporation rate can change with the temperature. Its evaporation rate can change with the velocity of the air. And we have to take from the uh, know from the table what is specific gravity, what is evaporation rate at this temperature, what is molecular weight, and what is our desired concentration. Then we will be able to calculate what flow rate for circulation we need. What flow rate for ventilation we need? Then uh, by we the way, will you... go... yeah, please, sorry. Then we will go for the calculation of the size of the size of the pump. If we come to know about the flow rate of the air, which is required in this scenario. Uh, yes. Okay. By the way, Mr. Abdul uh, you know something is a little bit confusing. It's not going to make me clear. Like the Heading says rate of generation of liquid solvent. So rate means uh, there is some rate for the generation of liquid solvents, not for the uh, rate for the ventilation. One thing is there. 
if we go toward the left side this bullet point it also says that in order to calculate the rate of generation of liquid solvents it means that the at what rate the liquid solvents are going to be generated if we want to calculate we utilize the following equation okay by this way it says like this but below we come here where it is explaining uh, like q is equal to the actual ventilation rate this is a little bit confusing q according to their explanation q means actual ventilation rate okay i do agree with this thing but in the, the heading on the left side they say the rate for the generation of the liquid solvents so how to calculate then the rate of generation of the liquid solvents Oh, oh, okay, okay. Let like, we, we can make heading in the front there, not go for heading. Actually, this is the explanation of formula. Q is actual ventilation rate. Q is for formula. Q is volumetric flow rate. Q is volumetric. Yeah, volumetric. That 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 is Q is for formula. And E evaporation. Uh, simply, if we if we want to calculate uh, one parameter. We must know the other parameter. We in the formula we can calculate any parameter. What the condition is that we must know other parameter to calculate this unknown parameter. But scenario. Uh, by, the okay. uh, by the way, okay. By the way, Mr. Far, uh, you know, no, this is still still confusing. If we are going with the Q is equal to four zero three uh, into ten raised power six. Okay, this is constant. We take it one side. now we have to look into the different other variables uh, okay other parameters specific gravity okay this is not variable er is the rate of evaporation okay this is one variable concentration is also variable okay molecular weight is for that liquid solvent so here if we go here so uh, a concentration is also it is but i what i feel i think uh, it, where it is written down where q is equal to the actual ventilation rate i think it should be here q should be the actual uh, rate of generation of the liquid solvent uh, i think we have to uh, re verify okay. this thing i am not sure yeah okay uh, mr zak what then what is evaporation rate Yeah, it is yeah. actually the rate of evaporation for that liquid solvent like like yesterday as we had discussed that uh, evaporation of any liquid can be done at any temperature okay the vapors will be will be evaporated from the liquid into that room okay and there will be some cloud of the vapors in the room so now what is there so the at what rate actually this liquid is going to be evaporated okay rate of generation means the rate of evaporation of the liquid solvent and mostly when there is the evaporation then the specific gravity also matters a lot okay so uh, sir it, it is confusing uh, okay. if uh, then how we can yeah please yes okay uh, okay mr jagat uh, uh, actually this formula as it is from uh, david jet book and it is expression uh, also as it is from david jet Uh, okay, if we, it is confusing, uh, uh, we can leave it for tomorrow. Uh, we all should uh, study about this formula, David Jet book, and then we will discuss it tomorrow. Okay, now clear. I have got one word. Sorry, I have just got one word. You go to the explanation of ER. They are saying that pints per minute. Okay, the evaporation rate of the liquid. So it means that this is its rate of evaporation. Okay, done, done, done. Okay. so so in the on the left side it is telling the rate of generation so lay rate of generation is almost equivalent to the rate of evaporation of something okay so okay. if they ask us to if they ask us to calculate the rate of uh, uh, generation then we have to take the cr out and will keep q inside okay any how because you know according to its uh, headline and its left side explanation and when we look into the formula actually they are actually not matching by the years there are oh, some deficiencies okay. in years also okay, okay. thank we, you thank you uh, we should change the heading according to that formula yes uh, sir there is one example for this in zayit you can uh, mention there is one example in zayit uh, okay Uh, oh, you can uh, you can check these examples. He talking about uh, missile uh, isarin uh, keton. 
Okay. 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 Uh, and uh, uh, also, I have good questions. Maybe I will search it. I have good question in about this, about the vibration rate. Also, sometimes uh, the students are confused because it is a bit to per minutes. Uh, sometimes it coming to you uh, by hours. Okay, so you need to divide it. Okay. So yes. uh, I have good example in this. I will share it also. Okay. There are two things are very important in this formula, uh, which can lead to uh, error. Uh, one thing, uh, here sometimes 10 is to minus six is not injected. Uh, then you should you should be careful about that formula. Is there 10 is to power six or not? Number two, uh, sometimes evaporation rate is not given in pins per minute. If it is not in pin, pin per minute, then you have to convert it in pin per minute. Uh, for example, it, it may be 1.2 pin per hour. Then you have to divide it by 60. It will be in minutes. And even uh, here, maybe pin later or uh, somewhat other unit, we then we must know uh, the units of other system so that we are able to convert it in pin per minutes. Okay, okay, actually, okay, okay. Actually, one, one thing is pre creating actually in the book, there is rate of 1.2 pin per every 60 minutes. The formula, uh, the example which is solved in Jake book, David Jake book, there is a statement that generation rate of 1.2 in every 60 minutes. It means 1.2 pin per hour. In the book, there is per hour. So to convert it into per minute, we have to divide it by 60. I think point is clear. Uh, clear or not? Uh, there is one example I shared also on the group. After you finish the session, you will find a good example. I share it now in the WhatsApp the group. Okay. Uh, maybe it is uh, after you finish uh, calculation of these examples or solving these examples. Maybe this uh, this part will be clear for all. Uh, okay. Carry on. Uh, you are expecting an example from my side? No, 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 no. After you finish, after all of the people go, just to check this example as a uh, practice, okay, okay. as a practice oh. for all. <laughs> okay, good, good. Okay. Uh, uh, one thing more. Uh, there are some numericals which are solved in the David Jade book. Uh, when uh, you will have time tomorrow, uh, you will uh, read, read these formulas in the book and you will also uh, look uh, some numerical and uh, by going through the numerical uh, there will be uh, more uh, clarification there will be more uh, clear doctor concept okay now we are uh, moving towards our next uh, topic uh, that is room air change uh, for example um, our environment uh, environmentalists mostly thought uh, for example uh, in one hour, our uh, air of the room should be changed two times. And some uh, environmentalists may say that the room of the air should be changed uh, three times in, uh, in an hour. Actually, this formula deals with this case. This formula deals with this scenario. When we are going to calculate that how many number of times the room, uh, the air of the room should be changed. Then we can apply this formula. The most important formula is, uh, is this. Uh, we should remember this formula by heart. And number of air changes, that is equal to 60 Q over VR. And Q again, actual ventilation rate. Then flow rate of air, ventilation of rate, that is CFM, cubic foot per minute. And we are volume of the room. To calculate the volume of the room, we must know three dimensions that is length, its width, and its height. 
and there should be in feet. And by multiplying the three dimension, we will get the volume of the roof in cubic feet. And then we can calculate number of room air changes. This is a simple formula that number of time that air should be changed, number of time the air should be changed in one hour is equal to 60 multiplied by flow rate of the air multiplied divided by the volume of the room. We must remember this formula by heart. This is not given in the BS, BCSP examination. And uh, if we look towards uh, David Jade book, there is also a numerical. Uh, here in this numerical, in this example, the flow rate of air is uh, 2500 CPM. Uh, volume of the room is 75,000 cubic feet. And by simply putting these two values, Q and VR, we can calculate that how many number of time uh, the air of the room should be changed in one hour. Yeah, any discussion point for this uh, scenario? Yeah, it's okay. So it means that actually this is the change uh i mean change of air is uh, actually the actual formula is q by r q by v okay means uh, this uh, ventilation rate divided by the volume of a room and the 60 which is coming i think uh, this Para. is a conversion factor from minutes to hour so that's why they yeah. have included 60. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, okay. okay 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 it, it is a simple formula and according to david Yard book not given in the book in the examination. We must remember it. Okay. Uh, here, we will study about types of the hoods. Uh, when they are, uh, we are uh, studying about the local exhaust uh, ventilation, we have also seen its uh, schematic diagram uh, in the slides. Uh, in the local exhaust ventilation, the basic components are uh, uh, hood and then branch ducts, then main ducts, and then fan, and then stack or discharge, uh, then filter, and then stack or discharge. Uh, the major component uh, uh, from which the dilution ventilation starts, that is the hood. Uh, okay, well, before studying this slide, uh, I will like to move on next slide, then we will come back. Uh, this is the this is the canopy hood. Here we can check this is canopy hood. Here below there is a process, there is a chemical reaction. There here there is a generation of contamination, which is lighter than air, and uh, naturally the contaminants tend to move upwards. And this type of a hood captures this uh, with its uh, size, with its uh, velocity, and then it uh, transports it towards the ducts, and with the power of fan, we discharge it after filtering through the filter. Uh, this is used for the contaminant, which is lighter than air. What, uh, there is one problem. If a worker, if a operator put his head inside the hood, inside the area between the hood and the machine, then he may expose to the contaminant. And this is an uh, another type of the hood. Uh, this type of the hood is uh, don't drop hood. Uh, this is used where the contaminant is heavier than air. Specific gravity or density of that contaminant is heavier than air. Then uh, we induce the air downwards, and then it is moved towards the duct side, and then it is filtered, then it is discharged. This is don't drop hood. And this is another type of the hood, and this is enclosure hood. This type of enclosure hood actually consists of a, a full enclosure 
uh, all the process all the operation is enclosed in a single enclosure and uh, here we move the air in such way that air is drawn inside the hood so that fresh air moves from the room inside the hood not contaminated air moves from the hood towards outside of the operator mostly in laboratories in medical laboratories we use such kind of the hood and this is receiving hood uh, receiving hood is uh, used mostly for welding tubes uh, where um, the emission rate uh, is uh, uh, higher enough we put this type of the hood very close to the emission uh, rate point of the emission and uh, this uh, receives the uh, contaminant it receives the fumes of the welding uh, from the source of generation uh, that is uh, depicted in the picture okay uh, i think uh, this is enough explanation so far about the hood uh, if there is any point if there is any question we can discuss here about the hoods Or we should move forward. Sure, sure. Okay, next topic is hood entry losses. Hood entry losses. When air moves inside the hood, when uh, a hood capture the air, then there may be some losses. There may be two types of the shapes uh, of the uh, hood, and it may be a, a, a hood with the flanges, uh, with flanges at the contours. There will be more losses, and then it may uh, have a plain uh, contours. Uh, there will be also losses, but there may uh, some low degree of losses. But the main losses at the uh, hood occur when we convert. the static pressure into velocity pressure when static pressure is converted into velocity pressure when static air is forced to move into velocity then some losses occur and this is the formula for the coefficient of entry losses at the hood that is equal to vp over sp vp stand for velocity pressure and sp is stands for static pressure at the hood again c coefficient of entry losses vp velocity pressure of the duct and sp static pressure of the hood here one thing is more important to mention here velocity pressure is in inches of water gauge and static pressure is in inches of water gauge okay this part is very important here if velocity pressure is given in a millimeter of mercury static pressure in millimeter of of mercury gauge then this formula is not applicable to apply this formula this formula is only applicable to calculate the coefficient of entry losses at the hood this cannot be applied to calculate the losses inside the duct this can't be applied uh, when we have the pressures in millimeter of rg either we have to convert the millimeter of uh, mercury millimeter of uh, mercury gauge into inches of water gauge we uh, can calculate well, yeah we well, can mr abdul ghaffar yeah uh, because you uh, sorry to interrupt here Uh, yes we can you see the this coefficient of entry loss uh, the coefficient of entry loss is having no unit no unit for this yes yeah. we can have even if we are having the millimeter hg uh, in the column or like 76 uh, millimeter column or 760 millimeter of hg okay so uh, we can have this because if vp and sp both are having the same unit either in millimeter hg then we can use them there 
Why? Okay. Because both the units they will cancel each other, and ultimately the coefficient of entry loss that is actually not having any unit. So we can get the accurate answer for this thing. Even okay. it is a WG or uh, so. What we have to do if one okay. is in millimeter HG and other is in WG. So we have to uh, either convert into millimeter HG or have to convert millimeter HG into the WG. Okay, Mr. Jamal, we can only use formula in this case. So our if ratio of VP or SP is same in both cases. Uh, for for example, for example, uh, in case of uh, water gauge, for example, VP and SP unit cancel each other. Whatever ratio is, we have a one ratio. But in case of we put the values in mm of HG and millimeter of GM, we have not the same ratio. Then our formula will not be applicable. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Please, can you repeat? Okay, we have two uh, values. Uh, for example, in inches of water gauge. Okay. Uh, for example, the, this is twenty. This is ten. Or twenty ratio ten. We will have twenty ratio ten. We have two. And if these values have we have in millimeter of HG mercury, or millimeter will cancel millimeter, or if we have the same ratio which we have obtained in previous case, then this formula is applicable. If the ratio change, ratio VP and SP change, we can't use this formula. This time we have to convert this in water gauges, inches of water. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Afar, you are right. But uh, one thing is very clear: like if you convert into any unit, any unit, the ratio will remain same. But the thing is, this the both the uh, VP and SP should be in the same units. Even if you convert WG uh, or into you know this millimeter HG or into the column, yeah, that is the 76 centimeter, I think. Yeah, uh, for this. Uh... Okay, okay, Mr. Afar. Uh, I am only say that uh, we should uh, check it practically uh, by converting both formula. If the ratio is main same, then we can apply. If the ratio is same, only uh, if we say that you know, millimeter will cancel millimeter, inches will cancel inches. This is not sufficient. If ratio is main same, then we can apply this formula in both cases. I do agree with you, but in any way, in any way, if you are going to, uh, I mean, use any unit, the ratio will come same. There is no any other factor that the ratio will not uh, come same. Ratio will 100% come same in any unit. Yeah, you are right here. We, I do agree with this. If uh, uh, by some uh, intro introduction of uh, some, you know, the variable that is coming there, which is just going to uh multiply with a denominator or numerator then you know the answer may change in some means then the ratio may change this is a different scenario but uh, uh, if the both units are same any unit will give the same ratio yes i do agree but we should yeah. check both the condition practically yeah sure 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 thank you thank you thank you Mr. okay okay Hello, next can I ask for uh, just to bring the other slide, please? I wanted to ask about something. Oh, okay, why not? Uh, about uh, the statistic pressures. It is due to any viscosity or just some air go inside the hood, or what is the reason of this uh, statistic pressures? What it can be overcome the real pressure or the real uh, air coming from the hood? Viscosity oh. or some leaking of air or what? Uh, I didn't catch your point. Can you repeat that again? Uh, the reason, the, the reason of the statistic, the, the static pressure, SCB, it is due to some leaking of air inside the hood or some uh, viscosity some viscosity between the air the fluid air and the, between the body of the hood what is the reason of this uh, okay. uh, you uh, meant to say, from you, where it come? Uh, you you mean to say why static pressure exists there yes why is a static pressure found of course that's why why something uh, is already interrupting the velocity of the air 
Uh, actually, static pressure is defined as a uh, force per unit area, uh, that area of the force which is uh, being applied on the force, force per unit uh, area. And we measure it, velocity pressure is measured uh, to keep the pressure tube parallel to velocity. And uh, when we measure static pressure, it is injected perpendicular to the velocity. Uh, so it is what, depending in the velocity, velocity uh, between the ear and the body of the hood. Uh, I know one thing that uh, uh, when there is flow, when there's change in area, then static pressure and velocity pressure mutually change. Static pressure yes, it is, already, uh, it is interrupted the other pressure, and uh, that is why some losing of the energy happen. Uh, okay, maybe they are due to friction losses or due to between the surface of the hole. But uh, uh, to explain this phenomena, uh, actually, uh, the people uh, who are from background of physics, they can explain better. I don't, uh, uh, I think so, I didn't uh, have so much explanation in mind. If anybody, any participant can explain it, please. Uh, okay, if you give me a chance, because uh, uh, what is uh, the static pressure and what is the velocity pressure? Static, uh, first of all, let me explain velocity pressure. It is something like a dynamic pressure also. Uh, if uh, I bring your thought uh, towards a uh, towards some liquid, then you can understand this also. If I say there is a pipe, pipe perpendicular pipe, and in that pipeline uh, there is water. Okay. Now at the base of the pipeline, what the head of or the height of that water column is going to give a pressure that is called the static pressure okay uh, just keep in mind and uh, uh, what what is there and the same pressure will be at the bottom and also on the side sides of the uh, pipeline okay so this is the static pressure what is the dynamic pressure if i want to uh, make this water co water column also flow i have put a pump on one end okay and the water is going to flow upward okay so what is there that flow rate uh, which is uh, i mean the pressure that is being produced due to the movement of the uh, water that is called the dynamic pressure okay and the pressure which is available at the uh, top to the bottom uh, of that column that is called the static pressure so in this scenario what is the static pressure like for example the pressure uh, which you are uh, like your sides the sides of your duct are going to face okay the sides of the duct which are going to face the pressure that is called the static pressure as in the previous picture they had put one pitted tube okay that pitted tube is not in the middle of the duct so it is at the wall of the duct so now any pressure that is uh, going across the wall of the uh, i mean this duct okay that pressure is called the static pressure this static pressure can also be in the middle also but at that point it will be a static pressure mostly it is considered with the wall of the uh, duct so what is the dynamic pressure dynamic pressure is actually your the velocity pressure at that time so with which flow rate the with which movement your air is going to flow that is called your dynamic pressure or here the velocity pressure okay thank you that's okay. now it's clear yeah. thank you okay okay uh, can we move to next slide yes please please uh, okay uh, the next topic is calculating air flow velocity and capture velocity uh, okay, we are studying about uh, local exhaust system. Uh, uh, we can imagine about uh, uh, hood and ducts and fire inside. Uh, here, uh, uh, we have to calculate uh, uh, where we come across uh, uh, capture velocity, phase velocity, and transport, transport velocity. Or uh, what is capture velocity? There should be enough velocity in the air that can catch the contaminant from the point of generation and it can transport it 
to the ducts. The minimum amount of velocity, the minimum quantity of velocity which can capture contaminants, uh, that is called capture velocity. Okay. Or if we uh, look this formula, that is uh, V is equal to 4045 CE FT. CE is entry losses, coefficient of entry losses at hold. And SP is static pressure at the hood. Again, V velocity of air that is foot per minute, and CE is coefficient of last, uh, entry losses and as the static pressure at the hold and that is in uh, in case of water gates. Okay, uh, uh, Mr. Jawad, uh, here, uh, this is uh, mentioned in inches of water gates. If we change it with the millimeter of Hg, millimeter of mercury, can we uh, apply this formula? Uh, no, here in this scenario, because uh, you are having the unit in FPM, okay, in FPM. So uh, here there will be impact of uh, change in the unit because in the previous formula, the units were going to uh, divide, I mean, you going to cancel uh, each other. So that's why the coefficient of static friction, okay, uh, that was actually coefficient of uh, entry loss was there. Yeah, coefficient of entry loss was actually having no unit. So when there is no unit, you can use any unit for the both values, but the unit should be the same for the both values. But in this scenario, WG is important if you want to calculate the velocity of air in FPM, like foot per minute. Okay. Okay, now we uh, see. Here, here is a case. Uh, for example, uh, at this surface, a contaminant is being generated. And uh, here, our hood is located. That is at some distance from the uh, contaminant source, or uh, that is X. Then uh, what capture velocity we will need, that is equal to Q over 10 X square uh, plus A. Here, Q is flow rate. X is distance of the hood from the source of the contamination. And A is area in square feet. Uh, this formula is uh, mostly applied uh, in that scenario. Now, when we are uh, going to calculate captive velocity, yeah, and uh, there is a, some distance uh, between source of the contamination and the hood, uh, that is X. Uh, here, X should be in feet. Distance from the hood should be in feet. Again, I think this must be in feet if we put uh, in inches or in other parameters. Uh, this formula will not remain valid. Uh, Mr. Jawad, uh, would you like to comment? No, no, it's okay. I think the I don't remember like the water gauge. Water gauge is also in the inches actually. W G. WG is actually in inches, but they are corresponding to the water gauge. Uh, this is generally it is looking like a water gauge, but the formula will be something in the inches. Uh, sorry, uh, sorry, I'm not very sure about this thing. Uh, we have to check uh, from the uh, you know this uh, pressure units. What is the unit of the water gauge? Okay, so whether it is inches, I think it is in inches. Then if it is, for example, in the inches. Then uh, somewhere maybe uh, it should be convert, divided by 12, uh, but I don't think so that it will be divided by 12 because already the formula has been created with the some uh, you know these are multiple like 10 x square. So maybe the multiples are there, so that's why we need not that one. Uh, but uh, practically when we are going to solve this question even from the years, then from there we can see whether he is dividing with the 12 or not to convert the inches into the feet provided that the unit of WG is inches or in the feet. Okay, okay. This, this is about this formula. Uh, in, in this scenario, uh, when our uh, hood is, is at some distance X uh, from the source of contamination, then value of X is in feet. 
Yeah, 100% it, it should be in the feet. Yep, it, yep, it, it, it should be in the feet. It should be in the feet. Here, if we change the value in inches, uh, uh, our calculation will be wrong. Our value will be changed. Okay, next, air cleaning devices. There are a number of air cleaning devices which can be used uh, in ventilation systems. Uh, yeah, in other uh, uh, general cleaning of air, uh, for example, there are mechanical separators uh, which separate the dust particle from the air. For, for example, there are gravity chambers. Uh, the principle of gravity chamber is that uh, we suddenly increase the area of the dust. When there is uh, increase in area of the dust, there is decrease in velocity of, and due to decrease in velocity, the dust particle which are heavier, these fall down and collected at the bottom of the gravity chamber. And uh, in pigment separators, the basic principle of in, in pigment separator is that uh, we impinge the air on different kinds of the frame and uh, we change the direction of the air and due to change in the direction of the air, uh, dust particle impinge on the surface and uh, the other air you have a change in the direction. And there are cyclone collector. Cyclone collector is just like a, a centrifugal pump. Uh, it uh, takes the air in the center and then it revolves it and uh, separate uh, the small size of the particle from the air. Yeah, these are my effects. And furthermore, there are filtering devices like, like MAD filters. Uh, IPA, uh, this is MAD IPA, this is HIPAA. High efficiency particulate air, air, air filters and fabric filters, uh, wet collectors. Uh, wet collectors are more efficient uh, then can remove a very small particle, 10 micron particle, even 5 micron particle. And uh, there are also electrostatic precipitator, uh, which uh, due to positive and negative charge can separate the dust particles. And there are absorbing and absorbing collectors. Uh, these are users, mostly gases, uh, which uh, absorb or absorb the gases and separate from the air. And uh, there are also combustion incinerators. Uh, if our contaminant uh, is uh, flammable, uh, then we may wish to incinerate it, we may wish to burn it. Uh, for this type of uh, contaminated combustion incinerator can be used. Yeah. Any questions so far about this topic, about this? Any point of discussion about this topic? It's okay. From my end, it's okay. Abdul Banab, Aster, Mustar Chat, Imran. No problem. We listen to everything. It's okay. Uh, okay, it means we can move Carry to on. next slide. Okay, next is ventilation measurement equipment. Ventilation measurement equipment. Okay, uh, when we deal with ventilation system, when we are going to design a ventilation system, uh, the basic things which we have to measure that is uh, static pressure, that is velocity pressure, uh, that is flow rate. Uh, we must be able to measure these parameters. Uh, from which instruments, uh, with which equipment we can measure, uh, for example, Peter tube. Uh, this is a simple tube. So we can measure with the pressures. We can measure it with static pressure. We can measure it with dynamic pressure. The only difference is that to measure dynamic pressure, we keep it in parallel to the velocity and to measure it, static pressure, we keep it perpendicular uh, with the surface of the wall. Then there is rotating van, uh, van uh, anemometer. Uh, we can measure air flow rate with it. Q, 
air flow rate we can make and measure with rotating vane uh, anemometer and there are also uh, thermal anemometer with the help of therm thermal anemometer we can measure velocity of air uh, it may be like a thermocouple it may be like a thermistor principle uh, when uh, air move on the surface of thermocouple or thermistor uh, when there is a greater velocity it will uh, remove more heat from the uh, instrument when there is decrease in velocity it will remove less heat and uh, there is calibration and we can convert it uh, into velocity and ultimately uh, with this principle we are able to measure velocity of the wave okay in short uh, when we are dealing with the uh, ventilation system we can measure static pressure and dynamic pressure with pitotube we can measure air flow rate uh, q uh, with rotating vane anemometer and we can measure velocity of air with the thermal anemometer. Yeah. Any point for discussion about this topic? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, something that is very important. Can you explain everyone uh, valid for which type of uh, contaminated? Because I face one question in Spain about the thermal uh, anemometers. He talking about some uh, painting or something like that, and they give uh, multiple choice which type of uh, measurement equipment is valid for this contaminated and they give me uh, some choice like bito tubes and thermal uh, anemometers and like that and the question the answer is thermal anemometers for that uh, i know uh, is there any source to know everyone are uh, adopted or is proper for what or which type of contaminated uh, okay uh, as far as uh, David Yates' book is concerned, there is only one point about uh, uh, your question. That is, pitted tube uses is limited to velocity uh, at or below 600 to 800 foot per minute. Pitted tube are used for the velocity 600 to 800 foot per minute or below. If the velocity is more than it, pitted tubes uh, are not valid there. Uh, this is only the single point in the David Yates book. Uh, it is in the David Yates, as you mentioned, it is depending in the rate of the flow. Uh, rate of the flow, it is determining the type of the measurement. Uh, and uh, I think this one found not only in the, the ventilation chapter, it is found in the industrial hygiene, I think. Uh, but uh, as I say, but uh, as you said, uh, sometimes he, when uh, he saying type of chemical, type of contaminated, uh, should we should know what is the type of uh, measure of uh, equipment measurement. For example, in this uh, span, he mentioned about some binting. He working with spray binting and what uh, if we need to calculate the uh, the contaminated, which type of the measurement or appliances. And they give me this uh, and without mention any type of threat or any calculation of threat. And in this time, I need to choose something. So it is the end, uh, now in this span or in this question, he make me uh, choose based on the type of contaminated, not based on the flow rate. So is there any, not only in the yet, even in Rogar, any place, any standard for the type of the contaminated based on uh, the type of appliances for measurement? Even uh, in any industrial hygiene book, anything? Uh, okay. Uh, at this point, uh, I didn't have the answer of your question, but I have one very important tip. The tip mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, the David Yates book is too much concise, and uh, uh, we we cannot find the answer of each question in the David Yates book. We must study uh, the, this type of topic of paper from an, any other books. Uh, however, I know one book that is Industrial Hygiene. Industrial Hygiene. That uh, is, I, I have so many books for Industrial Hygiene, yes. Uh, from American Conference. Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, or we should study this type of material from the Nebosh ID books. Nebosh ID books may provide answer. 
Limoges uh, also have uh, have good something, but the appliance is always the making the technician or how, or the how this technician worker. And not only in the new Bush book, also he didn't stop in this. Even he gives something like for uh, photo sensors also and uh, like that. Uh, but uh, each type are rubber for which type of contaminated. That is or which type of occupationals, not type of contaminated, which type of occupationals. Because it's spraying work are different from venting work, from vibro work, vibro created by work like that. Every type uh, have different contaminated and each contaminated have uh, proper uh, appliances for uh, measurement. That's why I'm searching about this because only the question in this area coming like that. Only question I faced. Maybe some of you answer so many questions in this one, but that is the only question I faced. In 2015 and 2017, the same question found in this span. Okay. Uh, may I just try to give some input here? Uh, yes, my allowed. Lord. Yeah. Okay, so uh, for this mainly, uh, whenever we have to make some selections, like for the rotating vein anemometers, uh, mainly, mainly, you know, when there is uh, almost a clean exhaust that is coming, but it is not always very important and uh, with low temperature, okay, with not very high temperature and the duct size is big one. When the duct size is big one, then we have to put the rotating vein anemometer. Not only depends upon the contamination, but also depends upon the, uh, you know, ducting system also. Uh, thermal anemometers are mostly used where there is a high temperature of your exhaust stream. Like you have used this uh, painting booth, okay, for example, uh, painting area. So mostly the painting is done uh, when the it is very hot. Okay, painting is mostly done in the hot environment. So what is there when they it flows uh, through that way? So this uh, thermocouple actually, okay, it senses, it takes the temperature from there and it makes a temperature difference, okay? So by the creation of this temperature difference, it identifies, okay, the air, mm, this amount of the air has been received, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the hot air uh, which was having temperature in it, the thermocouple has sensed that much temperature from it. So in this way, the thermo anemo thermal anemometer is used. Let me conclude this. Whenever the, your uh, this exhaust stream is hot, okay, is hot and it's not very clean, at that time you can make use of, and the duct size is also not very big then you can make use of the thermal uh, anemometer. For the rotating vein anemometer, what you have to do when the duct size is actually large. And in the board scenario, you have to keep the thermal anemometer and the rotating anemometer almost in the middle of the duct. And now the coming toward the pitter tubes, pitter tube is mostly used when there is, you know, the high pressures are there, the high pressure, uh, you know, ventilation is required and the pitter tubes are used. So this is a general understanding about this thing. Uh, like uh, rotating vein and anemometer, sometimes, you know, it cannot identify when they are the high temperature. When the high temperature are there, so it means that uh, uh, like their, uh, you know, heat of expansion, everything is having its own heat of expansion. So the high temperature may affect the rotating vein anemometer. That's why you use the thermocouples. So in the booth, painting booth, the vapors are very hot then you are going to make use of the thermal anemometer. Yeah, very good explanation. Thank you. Okay, the, um, any, of, uh, any input from any participant? Uh, okay, this is the end of our this chapter. Uh, I think we can have uh, uh, open discussion in, about this chapter, industrial ventilation. Uh, or uh, if we, if anyone have uh, some question about this chapter, uh, like uh, ASP pocket guide, uh, we can discuss here.
Uh, I share one question. I share one question in the group. You can open it. And the group of WhatsApp. You can uh, use it if you mm -hmm. wanted to explain any questions. If you are looking the, for the question from us. Hello? Uh, GG, okay. Uh, G, Mr. Yeah. Mr. Jawad, uh, please all can uh, look towards uh, WhatsApp group and uh, read the question. Mr. Gaffer, I have one. Uh, Sorry, I could not understand uh, your question. Like, how we can move to the WhatsApp? Uh, we have shared the question in WhatsApp group. Okay. Yeah, so in the WhatsApp group, uh, yeah, one question is there. Yeah. So during the industry discussion, yeah, this is the same one as uh, you know, you had also given one example for the solvents, the rate of generation, where I was having some objection a little bit. Uh, uh, you know this uh, rate of generation of the solvents so the formula which uh, they are going to use uh, uh, still i don't remember that formula uh, but uh, if we have to put uh, the values in the you don't formula need to remember can... sir it is found in the equation sheet you just remember the shape of the formula and you have to using the equation sheet in the exam yeah like we are having the specific oh. gravity here molecular yeah the formula was there i think this was uh, uh, what was that formula? Number five, I think. And the yeah, number yeah, five. Yeah. yeah, so so that was almost formula which you have used there. Yeah, where specific gravity was coming, evaporation rate was coming, and was going to be divided by the molecular weight, and K value was there, and there was some constant, I think, 10 rate. That was something like 4,005 multiplied by 10 raised power 6. I don't remember right now, but that was a formula. Yes, all those... Variables uh, and the okay. parameters are coming in this formula. Uh, I think uh, this was the formula. Uh, uh, can you see the slide here, right now? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. This this is the formula. Now you can see the question. Molecular weight is given. Specific gravity is given. Concentration C, 60 ppm is given. K factor 4 is given. Molecular weight, what is this? Is the methylene chloride. So its the formula will be CH3Cl2, I think, or CH3Cl, uh, because we have to actually know about the formula or the mole yeah, molecular weight is already given. So this is a very simple formula, sir. Now you need the CFM, okay, flow rate. So yes, this is a, this is a hundred percent formula. In this formula, we have to put these values, and we are getting the uh, answer for this. Now the concentration. Uh, uh, one, one thing is also only you need to remember uh, the evaporation rate, as he mentioned before. Remember, it is mentioned hour or minutes. You have to read it this good because sometimes you will missing this uh, this step. Yep, yep. So what? You what mentioned he has... hour. You mentioned hour. by hour, so you need to divide it by sixty. Because it is as an equation, the equation only for minutes. Yeah, because the evaporation rate is in, in minutes. Or if we can do uh, anything else, uh, no, no, no. Yes, it will be the, in the minutes always because uh, this factor is going to be multiplied by yes. the other one also. Yeah, so it will be always in uh, the minutes. Half pin. Uh, yeah, it is, uh, one half pin of methylene chloride. Each R. So this is uh, point uh, five divided by sixty. Yeah, we have to then multiply with the sixty, yeah. Huh? Uh, divided by sixty. Yeah, divided by sixty. No, why? Because uh, this is the rate we are having in the minutes. Okay. And this is given in hours. In question, there is yeah. It is in hours. It is given in hours. Yep. 
but the formula is in the minutes then uh, do you think that we have to divide with the 60 i think we have to multiply yeah, with the yeah. 60. in in question he is saying that in one hour there is evaporation of half a in one yes, hour, so he mentions a half of the bbl so you need in, to remember it is it will not be 50 it is 25. remember this and 60 you have to be negligated there are some numbers also have no benefit here in these equations there is some thread in this one. Uh, uh, simply, uh, Mr. Javad, uh, in one hour, there is evaporation of half inch. And uh, in one minute, it can decrease. Yeah, okay. So now there is another thing also. If we are getting the answer here, keep 60. Uh, away still what you have to do with the 60 in the end you have to either divide or multiply if we cannot understand this is a thumb rule just i'm telling you you calculate everything okay uh, don't convert into the 60 uh, i mean the minutes and the hours don't convert it okay now you are having the multiple choice question uh, if uh, the answer uh, by multiplication in the end by multiplication your answer is coming and by division there is no multiple choice so it means that you have the uh, that option if the both options are coming then there you have to be a little bit vigilant what the answer should be there but here it is coming that because in this formula the formula which we are seeing this time it is actually pints per minute okay and there he is telling the hours okay so what we have to do we have to convert hour into the minutes then we have to convert hour into the minutes then i think in the formula we have to multiply with 60 not divide by 60. One half tenth of and this concentration uh, because uh, for the TLV 50 ppm, it is telling this is a threshold limit value. Uh, this is 50, so it's above that one. So whether in the formula the C which we are seeing is it the uh, threshold limit value? I don't think so. It is actually the concentration of the uh, this uh, pollutant, okay, or this contaminant. So I think in C there will come 60 instead of uh, 50. 50 is actually a threshold limit value. This is just a reference. Uh, we actually final it is half of TLV that is 25 ppm. Our final target concentration is half of TLV. Uh, there is any, there is one more problem. Yes, yes. So the how much dilution ventilation is required to lower the concentration to uh, sir, half uh, the TLV? Sir, you got the point. Oh, okay. Actually, yeah, yeah, no, no. Our no, final I have heard the target point. concentration is not 50 m, it is 25 ppm. Yeah, how much dilution ventilation is required to lower the concentration uh, to the half of the TLV? Yes, sure, 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 sure. So it means that uh, it should be the 25 ppm. No. You have to reduce yes. it and then Number you have to multiply. Of multiply with two then i think also the answer should also uh, be multiplied sir, with two he said one half went so this half should be divided by 60. half divided by 60 you will get uh, the evaporation rate okay uh, number two you have to calculate everything as it is and i'm sure the answer will be c just if a vibration rate, uh, a vibration rate, it will be half per 60, okay? And this is a concentration, it will be 25, okay? And to calculate like that, you will find the answer C. Uh, well, one thing, one thing, uh, Mr. Muhammad, uh, that two divided by 60 is actually, actually nothing. We haven't to actually compare two with 60. Half. 60 is, half. yeah, half. half divided by 60. Half. Yeah, yeah, half divided by 60 means uh, 120. Okay, this is 120 because half divided by 60. Yeah, no, sorry, half divided by 60. Yes, if it half divided yes. by 60, this is 120. Yes. If a half zero, multiplied zero by 60, then it is 20. Uh, 
بير 60 بير 60 تو جيت ات مين بير بنت بير مينت اوكي تو ترانسفير ات فروم اور تو ترانسفير ات فروم انتو اير انتو بنت بير مينت اوكي از هي منشن ان ذا كويشن هي سايد ذا اوبريشنال ريزلت ان وان هاف ان وان هاف بنت اوف ميسايلين كلورايد اوكي He said, uh, being released each hour, okay? Being released each hour. That means it is 60 minutes. So I will okay. divide it ha one half per uh, 60. The result will be a vibration rate. Uh, vibration rate? Yes, there is uh, a vibration rate. And uh, now there is another trip is the concentration. How to calculate the concentrations? He said how much dilution ventilation is required to lower the concentration to have the TLV. What is the TLV? TLV he giving me uh, 50 per, uh, per, uh, per part million, okay, BBM. So I will divide it this 50 per two, it will be 25. And everything is uh, already found. So the C will be 25 and the ER, it will be, okay. And the ER, I think it will be 8.3 duplicated by 10, uh, I don't know, one second. 8.3 duplicated by 10 uh, minus uh, 3. Okay, like that. How to write it? I will write in the uh, here. 8.3, 8.3 duplicated 10. Okay. Eight more, uh, but it's not like this. It is uh, ten uh, uh, multiply it uh, minus three. Or you can give it like this direct. Here is the ER, okay? If a vibration rate. And the C equal to 25. Just to calculate like this, and I'm sure you will get the result. Uh, uh, okay, so so one thing I just want to add up here. Uh, I, actually, still I didn't make any calculation for this formula, but apparently it look, looks like this that uh, we have to actually multiply uh, the whole equation with sixty, and also we have to multiply by two. Why actually I am saying this? Maybe I am wrong. Uh, this is just a pre-assumption. Uh, the reason behind this is as they are saying that the TLV that it should be reduced. Uh, to the TLV, uh, half of the TLV, like a 25. So it is a common sense. If we just make use of common sense, then it means that we have to increase the flow rate. When we will increase the flow rate, it means that uh, there will be an increased number of the change of the air. So when the increased number of change of air will be there on the basis of the flow rate, so it means that then we have to divide the equation with two. If we are going to divide it uh, by two, so so it means that the CFM are going to be reduced from the original one even. So, so by using the common sense only, I think we have to multiply by two and also we have to multiply by uh, 60 instead of dividing by 60. Because uh, this well, is a minute, because the, it yeah. is the hours. So hours has to be converted into the uh, minutes for this reason. 
uh, actually, as I told you, it is uh, should be divided, and you have to find the relationship between Q and C. It is not direct relations because uh, C in the base, okay, not in the top. Yeah, yeah, but but look here, but look here. Why I'm saying this? Look here because it is the uh, minutes. Sorry, this is the pint per minute. If you okay. divide, okay, if it's a per minute. So if you uh, divide it with the 60 again, so the 60 will go at the top. Yes, I understand. No, the 60 will not go to the top because you are dividing some in the top. Okay. Just you calculate, you get the value and put it in this equation. Yeah. Do not put if all of the number in one times. Or otherwise, you have to use it in the calculators. Okay. Uh, another issue, I am sure if you are putting this value, Divide, uh, divide, uh, duplicated by 60 and duplicated by two. There is a result will, uh, you will not found in this uh, in this choice because I did it before. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe, maybe so, because I uh, have the only yeah. the only adopted result is 8.452. There is a result number C and it, it actually when I check yes there is a result and it will not come until you do this. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyhow, I'm not sure about this. The multiplication what, or yeah, division of 60, but here? who will be multiplied? What is my problem here? We bought some number we didn't use it. Okay, he said the uh, measure uh, concentration of 60 BBM. Okay, we will not use this. Some people will be confused and try to make a relationship between 50 and 60. Okay, then the, what? What is that I did before? And nobody will neglect it. He said one half. Maybe some people think 1.5. Okay. There is also a trip here. So it is only half. Use it. And sometimes uh, people will neglect the hours. Okay. You have to change from the hour into minutes. All of this uh, can uh, make us uh, give uh, some value uh, are wrong. And uh, actually, it, it will not affect in our exam because anywhere, anywhere by trying, you will get the right answer. But what is the problem? I need to answer this question in only 90 seconds. I have for every question in the ASV or CSV, I have only 90 seconds. So I have only one try for every question like this. It's okay. Anybody have another question? Any something you need? We can put it. Okay, the grades are most 11 o'clock. Do we go or we finish? Okay, no problem. Uh, okay, the Mr. Jawad, non Islam. Thank you so much. Thank you so uh, much, Mr. Abdulupa. That was a very nice presentation, you, and uh, we really loved and liked it enough because it is your presentation. Also, you know, gave us a lot of uh, you know the information. A lot of the ideas have been revealed. Fantastic, fantastic sort of uh, presentation by you. Very nice. Yes, uh, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, yes. Uh, because I I went there, but uh, in the last um, I came back, but uh, the way you expressing. The formulas, the way you're expressing the uh, whole uh, presentation is very nice. So uh, okay, my uh, appreciation and best wishes for you. Thank you, Mr. Man. Mr. Gaffer, Mr. Gaffer, actually, uh, actually have one uh, uh, confusion like uh, regarding the velocity. So when you were showing the formula, you showed the square root of velocity for the uh, when we are calculating the velocity pressure, V is equal to square root of uh, 4,005 VP. Uh, can you go to that slide one more time? Because in uh, when I was seeing in the day, uh, it was yeah. Uh, uh, this one. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so because in the eights, what I saw is it's uh, 4,005. Four, Square root of uh, vapor uh, velocity pressure. Uh, I think, uh, okay, let me check the book. It is only should be square root of uh, uh, velocity pressure. 
yeah 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 that's what so one way where is book uh, let me uh yeah yeah here is uh, here is a mistake uh, yeah here is a mistake uh, uh, there is a square there is a square root of only uh, velocity pressure not 405 okay 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 actually okay. Uh, one more thing uh, yeah uh, one more thing uh, you were discussing about hoods so in the hoods i have come across one question uh, in the examination which was talking about slot hoods slot slot hoods so uh, slot hoods. Uh, yeah because uh, this i have found yeah yeah because that has uh, come in the examination uh, the question was like uh, something like uh, uh, in ventilation yeah in ventilation uh, hood design the function of a slot hood in a slot hood is uh, no sorry the in ventilation hood design the function of the slot slot in a slot hood is to increase capture velocity or to provide a greater static pressure per uh, horsepower or obtain a proper air distribution or to decrease capture velocity so basically i was not knowing what is slot slot hood Ah yes, uh, we have only studied four types. Yeah, and uh, uh, if you don't mind, I I will discuss uh, other questions also, which you have mostly covered beautifully. You have covered, but uh, the questions are something tricky and uh, like a uh, bit confusing. Like, uh, but it it's easy if we because uh, once we go through your presentation very carefully, we can answer like. Uh, which of the following uh, concerning diluting ventilation is correct like uh, in a, it is related to dilution ventilation that dilution ventilation is used to like there are four options control a contaminant at its source control fumes from a, a lead fusing and um, the c is like controlling the low toxicity vapors or uh, the d is like uh, controlling uh, uh, asbestos fiber so here the, the dilution uh, ventilation uh, as you mentioned that lowers the concentration of contaminating uh, contaminant by adding a to the general yeah, uh, work area the, the so, major function of dilution ventilation uh, in the industry is to dilute the contaminant yeah yeah so uh, that, that question is asked in this way so uh, like uh, another question is there in the design of a ventilation system which of the following operations would require the greater capture velocity so the questions are asked like evaporation from open surface tanks spray booths welding and grinding uh, the uh, last uh, d is a uh, grinding so it is asking about the yeah, greatest I, capture velocity uh, so in grinding. this uh, yeah yeah exactly that's very nice actually i only, uh, I only guess, I only guess the grinding has a, a heavy, heavy particle grinding has a heavy particle yes 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 in uh, because in of grinding, high, there are heavy particles uh, Yes, yes, because the, that uh, demanding uh, for higher capture velocity, that's the reason, yeah. So, one more question. So, the another question is uh, local. So, uh, it's yeah. mean only studying David Gerd book. Only studying David Gerd books is not enough. Now these are the questions which are asked in ASP. Not sorry, it's not asked in CSP. It's asked in uh, ASP. Uh, the questions which are taken and uh, mostly you are touched the topics which we need to focus. Like in the uh, one more question is there. Like uh, in industrial environments, the concept of local exhaust ventilation is used extensively. The purpose of uh, local exhaust ventilation is to 
uh, the options given are prevent any entrance of air contaminants, remove contaminants uh, at uh, their source, provide dilution ventilation, provide spot ventilation for comfort. There is one, uh, one more. Uh, would you repeat your uh, question, please? No, the question is in industrial environment. Local, local, yeah. So here, uh, it's a, it, it is already covered by him, Mr. Gaffar, it has been covered. Uh, in uh, industrial environments, the concept of uh, local exhaust ventilation is used extensively. So it is, he is asking the purpose of local exhaust ventilation. So just uh, the uh, uh, multiple choices which he has provided, when we read that, it will confuse you. When we go through the definition, then it's very easy. So, so the first the yeah, the first first A it is like prevent any entrance of air contaminants. So it is like preventing any entrance that uh, air contamination is not, it stops uh, from entering of uh, any air contaminants. So that's mentioning like prevent any entrance of air contaminants. And B is remove contaminants at their source. C provide dilution ventilation. And D is uh, provide spot ventilation for comfort. Uh, B, yeah, B. Yeah, exactly. That's what, because uh, he added one word uh, like at their source, so that little bit confuses us. Okay. And uh, related to the canopy hood, which he has mentioned, the question which has come uh, related with uh, the canopy hood, uh, so the question is like this, like a canopy hood would be considered an acceptable ventilation system for a large solvent dip tank because the hood would be unacceptably large, large fans are needed, contaminant is drawn through breathing zone, a hood would get in the way of lifting device. Its answer is C, I think. Because yeah, for yeah. this, it will go through the breathing zone because the person has to put himself in between the uh, contamination and this uh, canopy hood. Yeah, exactly. And uh, related to static pressure, uh, there is one question like, which of the following statement is not true about the static pressure in a ventilation system? So that first one is like static pressure is measured parallel to the direction of flow. Static pressure tends to collapse the duct in an exhaust system. Static pressure acts in all directions. Static part, uh, static pressure is a part of total pressure. Well, mm -hmm. it's A, I think. Yeah, exactly. That, that's the that one because uh, the static pressure is always measured perpendicular to the direction of flow, uh, as per his uh, picture and diagram, which he has shown. So that's the one. And, uh, I think uh, this uh, question. I think we, uh, uh, Mr. Jawad can uh, answer this because I feel yesterday you were discussing something related. According to Osha. Uh, at 1910.94, uh, ventilation a point spray booth operation should provide enough dilution a to reduce the vapor of flammable material to dash percent of lower explosive limit. It is asking 10 percent, 15 percent, 20 percent, and 25 percent. Shall I repeat the question? Maybe mostly this is a 10. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, repeat the question, please. According to OSHA, it has mentioned the uh, ventilation standard. A paint spray booth operation shall provide enough dilution air to reduce the vapor of flammable material to what percentage? He's asking the percentage. The flammable, uh, the vapor of the flammable material to what percent of the lower explosive limit? LEL. So it is asking 10 percent. 
but here it is given 25 percent maybe not sure mostly okay maybe i am not sure about this thing yeah no yesterday when you referred uh, that, uh, that that time i was referring the standard uh, you were right because uh, i was uh, directly uh, referring the osha standard uh, from the osha standard book so it is mentioning 10% so the yesterday you added up a new point which i was considering uh, that was my misconception i was considering direct 10% but uh, the lower uh, explosion limit the, for that value we are going to consider 10% that was I, I was not knowing that but here it is uh, shown that like uh, here this uh, explanation what he has given is the total air volume exhausted through a spray booth shall be such such as to dilute solvent vapors to at least 25% of the lower explosion limit of the solvent being sprayed the standard then gives an example of the calculation for a typical solvent okay please. one more question so one more Three, one, four. this is a uh, uh, in ventilation work total pressure is the difference between um, static uh, pressure and the velocity pressure or uh, measured parallel to the axis of flow or normally positive on the suction side or the product of uh, static pressure and velocity pressure this is one more question uh, can you repeat the question please yeah in ventilation work total pressure is uh, the difference positive. between positive or total total pressure because uh, uh, already we have gone yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah ventilation in the we have covered that one point actually he has covered this one okay, so the okay, total yeah. pressure is uh, the difference between static pressure and uh, uh, velocity pressure this is not the correct answer so because it is the uh, uh, sum of both of this so the second one is uh, measured parallelity to, to the axis of flow and uh, c is normally positive on the suction side and d is product of uh, static pressure and velocity pressure so a and d is ruled out we are left with b and c so now uh, as per his diagram which he showed uh, it's i think uh, it's a uh, b because uh, measured parallel to the axis of flow yeah that's the parallel to the yeah these questions i have i have uh, seen because other others are numericals which i need systems to discuss and one also yeah that's it thank you for listening to me thank you thank uh, you so much okay. Mushta. that's good okay thank you mr mustaf mr namaslam thank you everyone for listening for patience uh, i think that's 11 o'clock and uh, we should end our session. Okay, a lot of bye bye. Thank you, Mr. Adulufa. Thank you so much. That was a nice, nice session today. Thanks a lot. Okay, okay, bye -bye. really, you put a lot of effort in preparing this presentation. Yes, okay, thanks.